Well, you don't have to be good at math to know that number one is higher than number 17. Cornell coming into the game against Syracuse this last Tuesday, ranked first in the nation. Syracuse dropping all the way back down to 17. 330 in Cornell, all, already up 1-0. David Mitchell scores. He's from Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. He likes to play lacrosse, I guess, in Canada. Didn't get into uh, hockey, I guess. Then seven minutes in, again from the same situation, Eric Pittard scores 4-0 Cornell at that point. Syracuse really just couldn't get anything going early. Mike Lavelle misses there, and then right here, Moose Jaw Mitchell again, 6-0 Cornell at this point. What are you doing? What is, co coaches are confused, but then Greg Narowski scores. Finally gets Syracuse on the board, 6-1 after the first quarter, so we move into the second. More Cornell, more Moose Jaw. Already a hat trick from the kid from Canada, 7-1 Cornell at that point. So, we cue the comeback. Kenny Nims all by himself. Syracuse down by five at that point. And then to cap off the first half, Greg Rommel. Goal, eight to six, score at halftime. Syracuse cuts the deficit to just two. Moving on to the second. Rommel again, cranks and fires. Yeah, that's right, I just scored, 10 to 10. And now this next play, Peter Colaccini, from, as Ben's grandmother would say, his tookus makes the save. A top 10 highlight across the board, but Cornell's offense keeps coming at him. Casey Lewis, the unassisted goal, 15 to 12 at that point is the score. Then Syracuse again, doesn't want to lose in the carry dome against number one Cornell. Dan Hardy, goal, 15 to 14 at that point, only down one. Now less than a half minute to go. Stephen Brooks, 15 yards away, finds the back of the net. Now just 28 seconds left, tied at 15. Now only eight seconds left after winning the faceoff. Max Seibold, one-on-one, -on -one, beats Steve Panarelli and beats Peter Colaccini. Syracuse loses 16-15 to the final. Cornell comes out on top, number one. Even though Colaccini could not save that last one, he did have a career-high 22 saves in this game. Got to tip your cap to him. For Syracuse, Greg Narowski, five goals. That takes the orange. And for Cornell, three players with three goals or more. Citrus TV men's lax reporter Brian Mueller was at the Dome for the game. Let's send it back out to him for some analysis. Well, thanks guys. I'm here at the Carrier Dome following Syracuse's 16 to 15 loss to Cornell and just an amazing play at the end. Max Seabold with a game winning goal, which is four seconds left beating Steve Panarelli and scoring the winning goal. Just an amazing range of emotions after the game. Cornell obviously ecstatic. Peter Colaccini was so upset he broke his stick on his knee after the game. And obviously the talk after the game was still about that final goal. He started talking about a play where I, I started with it and carried it behind the, the cage and go lefty and possibly look for some guys cutting, but running that through my head, it didn't seem like we had enough time, and I told him I just, you know, I think I could get under him and <coughs> get to the cage, and he let me do it. We were going to slide to him, but not knowing what they were going to be set up in offensively, we relied on our communication to see who was going to go, and, 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 and we didn't get that. Uh, and, you know, Max made a, a great play, and... and uh, uh, as a result, they win the game. Uh, giving 100% the whole entire game and then come up one goal short at the end with uh, eight seconds left it does a lot. Because, uh, you know, all that work you got to get out of the hole, to get back into a game, to lead a game, to tie a game, uh, doesn't mean anything anymore. This loss puts a lot of pressure on SU. They have to win out their last four games in order to have a chance to get back into the NCAA tournament this year. From the Carrier Dome, Brian Mueller, Citrus TV.